Um, all right, so anyone who's ever worked in a newsroom has had this experience where you come in the morning and you have your coffee and you have your notebook and you're like ready to go and you walk into the morning meeting and you sit down and everyone starts to talk about what you're gonna do that day. And somebody at some point eventually tells you, here's your assignment. And so when you get your assignment, you say, okay, uh, I'm going to go out and I'm going I'm to tackle this assignment. You grab your photographer, you start doing your background, you start getting notes and making phone calls on this story. And as you do this, you maybe you go out and you get someone to agree to your interview, and you go out and you start to interview that person and you realize this is a fantastic interview, and they're giving you great sound bites and great quotes and you're really getting excited about this story. Your photographer <laughs> goes out to the scene or, or wherever the story's happening and they you know, they get like the perfect, like the money shot and you're, you're stoked because you're like this, I'm, I'm the lead, like I'm awesome today. And, or maybe you are a producer like I was and producers are notorious for getting to a certain point in the day where they become really, really very excited about their show and they have, um, you know, the A block of the newscast and the B block and the C block and everything's working very well together and you've written teases and there's alliteration. You're so excited about that because you're a producer and uh, you have like a cold open and you're just like, it's so great. And you're like, this is going to be like the best show ever. I'm so excited. Um, if you work in print, the same thing, you know, you've written a headline, you've, you've poured over every single word and you, you finally got it right and, you, and you're really excited about what you're going to do that day. And then what? Like every single time in a newsroom without fail, you get to this point in your day, 80, 90% of your day is complete. You have something really, really great. And then, right. So breaking news. And you're like, all right. You throw everything you worked on all day completely out the window and you run towards the breaking news. You pivot immediately and you go and you change everything that you've worked on all day and you go and you follow this breaking news story. And the most amazing thing is that what you actually accomplished in that last 10% of your day covering that breaking news that just happened inevitably at the end of the day, and what you've accomplished in those last final moments of your workday often turns out to be better than what you had done the entire day leading up to that, the thing that you'd thrown out the window. And you've done it with less time, and you've created something far, far better. And this tells me something about every single one of you who's ever worked in a journalism in a newsroom as a journalist, and that is that you can be an absolutely excellent entrepreneur. And this has nothing to do with having your MBA or having taken financial accounting. I certainly did not. Um, no, it matters not whether you can open QuickBooks or do you know, complicated math. These are not the skills you need to be a great entrepreneur. What you need is sort of this inherent ability to understand what works. And I think journalists do such an amazing job of this, and yet I talk all the time to journalists who say, gee, Kim, how did you do this? How did you go from the newsroom to being an entrepreneur and, and running your own company. And I said, you know, honestly, my journalism background is what allowed me to do this. And I'll explain. There's essentially three things that I think journalists do very, very well when it comes to entrepreneurship. And the first one is that you are not in love with your own ideas. Okay, this is a very, very important point. If you ask any one of your friends who works in corporate America what they would do if at 4.45 their boss walked in and said, what have you been working on today? And they said, X, Y, Z. And the boss said, great, throw that out. I'm going to need you to work on this thing over here for 10 minutes. And then we're going to have a meeting. And I'm going to look at what you did in 10 minutes. And I'm going to judge your entire career based on that. <laughs> your friends would freak out. OK? People do not pivot well, um, generally speaking. Journalists pivot extremely well and see value in getting that feedback and responding to it. And so you're not afraid to say, what I did isn't good enough. I'm ready to do something better. And this is very, very important as an entrepreneur. Number two, you can do much, much more with much, much less. So anyone who's ever been in a news van put together with scotch tape and MacGyver's shoelace and whatever piece of a Q-tip that someone shoved in the steering wheel, you know the resources are scarce in a newsroom. But we do a lot. And you can find ways to work within what you have at your disposal to do some absolutely amazing things as a journalist. We just have to. And so when you go out and you try to start your own business, this exact scenario will happen where you, most of the time, will not have every single resource that a major corporation would have. So instead, you have to find ways that you can be resourceful and just figure it out. Um, and then third, you can make absolutely anything look good. This, journalists are very good at this. 
So you have a story, just about anything, and you can put it together and you can package it and you can present it in such a way that everyone just is instantly entertained by what you've done or informed or whatever your goal was. So you see reporters all the time, they stand in front of you know, some screen of nothing and they're like, this you are looking live at a screen, at a field where something amazing just happened and people were flying everywhere and it was, it was amazing. It doesn't look like anything now, but it truly, it was amazing. And reporters are very, very good at this and at home you're like, okay, that looks like just a field, but it is awesome. That something awesome happened there. Because journalists do this really, really well. You know how to package it and present it and make people understand what it's like, even if it maybe all the parts aren't quite there. And again, something you, you have to do as a journalist. So you are not in love with your own ideas. You can do much more with much less, and you can make anything look good. So today as we talk about engagement and all the different things um, that you can do to increase engagement or all these different ideas and things that are coming out, what I would like to say is, there's a massive opportunity when it comes to engagement and all the things that are happening in journalism today, and I, I believe it's your opportunity, not just to create something in your newsroom, but, but truly to create something as an individual and, and create a business and start something. And I really, really think that you have the tools, because if I can do it, I promise you can do it. Um, so I went to the University of Florida Journalism School. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that in here, but that's what happened. Go Gators. Um, and I went out and I worked in, uh, local newsrooms. I worked at WJXT in Jacksonville, Florida for about 10 years managing, managing news. And um, one day we had uh, a big story and we were not doing well. Um, generally didn't really have any information about the story and we're kind of getting killed. So uh, my intern, this is 2007, my intern says, hey, um, how about if we check on Facebook and we see if there's anything about this on Facebook. And back in 2007, Facebook was only for college students, for the most part, at that point. Um, so not only was he the only one who could log into Facebook, he was one of the only ones who'd ever heard of it. Um, I, uh, being obviously a visionary manager, was like, sure, intern, let's log into that Facebook thing and let's check this out. Um, mostly out of desperation. So we logged in and he went to the same college as someone that was involved in the story and sure enough, he found people to talk to and information and, and, and all kinds of things. And the next thing you know, we were absolutely dominating this particular story. And I kind of had a moment where I realized, you know, what we're going to be able to gain from social media, what we're going to be able to do when we can engage with our audience, get stories there, promote our content, and, and, and also use it as a news curation tool, this is going to be massive. And then being an executive producer whose job it was to put systems in place, I realized that it was going to be a mess. Um, I was going to have to teach the 75-year-old news anchor how to log into this Facebook thing. I was going to have to teach my boss um, that it's not okay to write the password in bold letters and put it up on the bulletin board. Um, all of these things were going to happen and they were going to be my problem and eventually my fault when they didn't work. <laughs> so I thought, okay, what can we do to fix this problem and get ahead of it? And I sort of had this concept for creating a software tool um, that would you know, be a place where everyone could work together. Um, and that's really how Social News Desk was born. Um, I put together a group of really talented um, engineers and they built out a, a beta version of our product. And I called my old boss where I used to work at my old TV station and I said, I have this thing and this is my idea and can I come and, and test it on your people? Now I had quit, um, so I, he was very nice and he said yes. Um, but so I went in with my with my beta product and I tested it and it was really bad <laughs> it was like really bad and I was absolutely fine with that um, because I'm not in love with my own ideas and continue not to be to this day and so when we brought it into that particular newsroom and they told me how bad it was I was actually thrilled I was the happiest person who had ever been told that their thing completely sucked um, because what they also told me was how to do it better so I said, okay, tell me what's bad about it and tell me how I'm going to fix it. And they did, and it was fantastic. And it was actually far less work because we were able to take all the ideas that they had and build those instead of building everything that we could think about and then worrying that it didn't really work. And we do this to this day with Social News Desk. We take into account every idea and everything that comes from clients. And when there's something that isn't working for them, I every time see it as an opportunity and am and, and very careful not to ever have my feelings hurt because some feature or something that we built we thought was going to be great and then it wasn't and that's okay as long as you're ready to pivot and prepared to listen to who's out there. 
So we created this beta product, and I tested it in newsrooms for about six months, and we were getting better. Um, we were getting feedback, and things were getting better, and I finally decided, I think we might actually be able to get someone to pay for this. Wouldn't that be great? And so we went out, we started selling, we attended lots and lots of trade shows, and we called everyone we knew, and we tried to sell it to them. And I thought, someone might actually call us at some point, so we should have a phone number. So we I set up a phone number, and it was great. When you called it, it said, thank you for calling Social News Desk. And it said, press one for customer service, press two for sales, press three for billing, which was really funny, because we didn't have any clients, so I don't know who was calling billing, but it was there. And absolutely every single one of them rang my cell phone. And I did this because it was important at that point for us to be able to prove to our customers that we could handle it. We were very new. We had, well, we had no customers, our potential customers. Um, we needed to show that we had the tools and the resources and the understanding of their needs to be able to handle it. And calling in and, and you know, having someone answer their cell phone isn't maybe the best first impression when you're trying to establish yourself as, you know, being able to handle a major news organization's social media strategy. So, quite literally, whatever button they pushed, they got me, and I would say billing department. Um, and it was fine. It worked very, very well. And it was, it was my ability to be resourceful, having done this in news so very many times, and say, okay, maybe you don't, we don't have the resources. Maybe I can't do everything I would, I would love to be able to snap my fingers and do right now, but we can do a lot with what we have, and so let's do that. So we started to sell, and we actually, um, maybe about six months after we had gone into beta, we actually signed our first contract, and I was thrilled, and uh, it was actually a, uh, a Fox station in New York, so we started big, and I immediately redid every single piece of marketing collateral that we had, it was like the giant case study on Fox News in, in New York, because that was all we had, and I was going to make sure that everyone knew about it. Um, five minutes ago we had no client, now we have one, that's a huge increase, percentage-wise. <laughs> and I know you're not math people, but, um, so I was, I was like, okay, well everyone will know about this. So we, I mean, we added it to our website, and we did case studies in our trade show booth. I mean, I may as well have worked there, because I mean, I just had it everywhere. But what it did is it gave us what we needed to go out and, and again, take one more step toward proving that we could do this and say, look, we do have a customer. In fact, they actually love it and everything's going really, really well and let me tell you about that. Um, and so just like in your, in your news jobs, you maybe don't have every single piece of information in video and, and soundbite and everything that you could need, but somehow your presentation skills as a journalist enable you to put together something that, that works. And so again, in your career as an entrepreneur, this is something that will really serve you uh, incredibly well. So there are lots and lots of companies that have done this, not just, not just Social News Desk. Um, lots of journalists who've gone out and they've started something and they've created a business. Um, and I really do think that journalists have some, some tremendous skills to be able to do this. Um, you know, we, um, after the point where we had gotten that Fox 5 in New York, we went out and um, maybe about a year after that we had about 20 customers, um, and today, uh, over 600, all over the world. There's a, there's a TV station in India that uses Social News Desk, and it absolutely blows my mind. Um, but it's really, really cool, and I think that what it really comes down to is not my ability to balance a checkbook or send out invoices or any of those types of things, but it's truly understanding our customer and then using, using what I have, and that is journalism skills. Um, so not being in love with your own idea, doing much more with much less, and then, you know, just knowing that you can make anything look good can really put you many steps forward toward being able to take what you see as an opportunity and engagement and some idea that you have or that you've learned here even and being able to turn that into some sort of a business idea. So that's what I've got. Ta -da. <laughs> Questions? So you have a lot of products that you offer news organizations. Can you kind of get into a little bit of the minutia of what you're teaching them that they might not already know, maybe a case study or an example of such? Um, sure. I mean, you know, we work with a, um, a lot of local media organizations, um, many, many broadcast TV stations, but newspapers and things as well. And so what we've started to do recently is work with a lot more smaller um, newspapers. And so what I see happening with them is that um, they have no idea in general why, why they're doing social media or even digital in many cases, um, like even their website. And so I think what we try to do is sit down with them and say, 
you know, what's the point? Like, why are you doing this? You don't have to. No, no, Mark Zuckerberg is not going to come to your house and like yell at you if you don't get on Facebook. So what can you do to make sure that this actually is working for you and, and understand within your organization why you're doing it? And so we do a lot of um, social media coaching and working with our customers to try to help them understand why and then to properly um, get the rest of the organization on board, make sure that they can communicate that with everybody so that you know, when there is a, a reporter or a producer or someone who works overnights and they're in charge of speaking on the behalf of your brand, that person better understand everything about your mission and your goals just as much as, you know, the day side, the day side crew. And I think that's a special, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a special concern for newsrooms that are 24 hours a day. And so you don't always have the benefit of a, you know, a, a social media marketing group that are, you know, professionals. You have, like, everyone has to be able to do a good job. Um, and so I think that's something that um, is probably one of the larger challenges that we, that we kind of work on with them. And as a follow-up, are you surprised at how many news organizations, and I think probably smaller ones, um, don't have a better grasp of the very things that you're talking to them? about or do you think that they do and they don't know how to harness that in the marketplace I mean I think that I think that journalists um, journalists tend to have a lot of skills related to journalism and so when we bring out you know marketing and social media and these types of things it's not necessarily native especially for the folks who've been in that newsroom for a long time it's just not something you know there was no social media for this 75% of their career. And so when we come around and we try to teach them what to do, it's just something that's so very new to them. So I think especially with some of the smaller newspapers that we tend to work with, they, um, you know, they're just, it's very difficult for them to adapt. You know, a lot of their folks have been doing this for a really long time. So, you know, you just have to be gentle. Questions? Oh, got one in the back. It's gonna take me a second. You're all the way across the room. Where is the intern now? Uh, <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a producer. He works at a TV station in Orlando. He's a good, he was an excellent intern if anyone needs a, an intern or a producer. I don't know that he, he knows the story, but I'm not sure that he, well, certainly at the time, he didn't realize how much of an impact it had had on me. But I did, I, I know him, and years later I found him and I explained. So. Kim Wilson from Social News Desk. Thank you, Kim. Yeah.